Hi, I'm Rachel from Gentle Frog. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. If you're having issues with your bookkeeping, please follow the link at the end of the video to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me. Thank you. In this video, I want to show you how to set up your QuickBooks desktop file and how to enter about a year's worth of data into the desktop file. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to pretend to own a business called Gentle Frog's Fantasy Pet Shop. At my fantasy pet shop, I sell things such as unicorns, dragons, and mermaids. I also sell sphinx, jackalope, and shoelace snakes. The purpose of this is just to give you an idea of what it's going to be like to set up a QuickBooks file from scratch. And so I've created a make-believe business, I have make-believe transactions to enter, and I have a real QuickBooks file that I'm going to use to do all this. So let's get started. I'm now ready. I'm the owner of a fantasy pet shop. I know that I want to use QuickBooks desktop, but I'm just not sure which one I want to use. Let me start by just Googling QuickBooks desktop. I make my way over here to where it says QuickBooks Desktop Compare. That's perfect. I definitely want to compare. The web address is quickbooks.intuit.com forward slash desktop. Let me go ahead and click on this. So I can see that there's three editions of QuickBooks Desktop. There's Pro Plus, there's Premier Plus, and there's Enterprise. One of the things that I thought I knew about QuickBooks Desktop was that I didn't have to buy it as a yearly subscription. Let's go ahead and take a look at this and figure out what's going to make the most sense for our business. I'm just going to immediately rule out $1,000 a year, right? I know that my business is small. I sell a, a limited number of fantasy pets every year. Technically, I sell zero. But in my make believe business, I sell a limited number of fantasy pets and I it just cannot justify $1,000 a year for my accounting software. So now I'm really just comparing the Pro Plus and the Premier Plus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for where the, the little dots stop and figure out what do I get if I upgrade to the next level. So the difference between these two is I get forecasting. I don't really need forecasting. Industry specific features. Uh, let me click on this, see if it tells me anything good. So profitability by product or project and client. I don't really need that. Bill clients progressively by job phase. It is important, but probably not so applicable to my business. Industry specific reporting, including donor contributions, sales summary, and more. None of this sounds like something that I need. So I'm, I'm feeling okay about not taking the middle tier, but let's keep looking. So there's a difference. I can have up to three users for the first tier and up to five users for the second. In my imaginary business, I have myself and my bookkeeper, maybe myself, my bookkeeper, and my account. So no matter how you slice it, I don't, I don't think I need more users. I'm not going to use QuickBooks for my payroll, so I can skip that. Remote hosting is available, but I'm also going to skip that. When I look at this, I've made a decision that says, I'm going to be the happiest with the Pro Plus 2021. I do want to take a step back, put on my bookkeeper hat, and let you know that there is the option available to get QuickBooks for a Mac 2021. Um, I do not advise that you get QuickBooks for a Mac. I find that it's a bit frustrating in this video series that I'm doing for you guys. It will not be showing you how to set up QuickBooks for a Mac. I do have a Mac. I do use it from time to time. We're just going to skip that. Back to my, my fantasy shop owner. Pro Plus is what I think I want, but it says that it's an annual subscription. I know that I didn't always have to buy an annual subscription and I don't necessarily want that. I want to know what my other options are. The answer to that question is right here. So software and added services, that's what's currently toggled. If I change the slider to the right, I'll get to see what the pricing is for software only. When I change it to the right, I can see software only for the product I'm considering is $399. It's not $399 per year, it's just $399. I 
So $399 versus $199 for the first year and $299 for every year after that. When I look at my list, uh, unlimited customer support is available for an additional fee, no problem. Um, data backups and upgrades, I have to upgrade to the plus, which is that annual subscription. If I can take a moment and just put on my bookkeeper hat again, you do not need uh, to subscribe to the plus edition and take backups. You can take a backup of your QuickBooks file without that. I'll definitely show you how in this video. So if I look down, everything else, no problem. So, so I say to myself, what I really want is this pro edition for $3.99. You can click buy now, it goes through the prompts, you can do whatever makes the most sense for you. I'm gonna close this and we'll pretend like we did all this together. So I, I already own the software. Um, so we're gonna do this demonstration using the QuickBooks 2021. You can tell at the blue ribbon at the top of my screen, it says accountant 2021. I'm just gonna to toggle it to the pro edition. So toggle to another edition, QuickBooks Pro, click next, toggle. So it thinks for a second. This is the super seeker way that accountants can verify that something will work for you. It's because we can switch back and forth between Pro and Premiere. And if you're an accountant watching this, this is a cool trick you can do. You can switch back and forth. I'll do this when I'm making videos for people. So if I need to show them how to do something, I can go to their version, make the video and say, oh, this is how you do that thing. And I know for sure that it's not gonna show them anything they don't have access to. Okay. So now we're using QuickBooks Desktop Pro 2021. I'm gonna start by saying, create a new company. Who am I creating this for? For myself. So I'm gonna click Start Setup. So this is asking me for an Intuit ID. This is uh, the ID that I registered with when I bought my software. I recognize that this is not QuickBooks Online. I will not need this again to open up my QuickBooks, but I definitely should use an email that I can access later because if you ever need to re-download the software, you're gonna need this information. I have two-factor authentication, so I'm just gonna ask that they text me a code. While we're waiting for this to think, I just wanna let you know what's going on here. What I'm gonna do is create a series of videos showing you how to set up and catch up a year's worth of bookkeeping this won't give you everything you need to know. The intent for this is to give you a really good sense of what it's like to catch up your data and to help you see how it works with different software so you can identify which software is the best software for you to use. Not this is the best, definitely hands down, this is the best software, but rather you know yourself and you know what you like and I want you to have a chance to explore various software options without going through the pain of setting it up for yourself. So my business name is General Frog's Fantasy Pet Shop. My industry, uh, I was going to say pet store, but apparently pet's not an option. Uh, let's say that our industry is retail shop. Our business type, it's a sole proprietor. It's me. It's me and my adopted sock monkey. Okay. Uh, my employer ID number, we're going to get real creative here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My phone number, 206-850-1105. My business address, Bellevue Bay Northeast. Sweet. If you have questions, that is my phone number. Uh, if you want to send candy, this is my mailing address. Well, I can't see it any better than you can, but I'm going to click the blue button and hope for the best. I've already created the video for QuickBooks Online, and this is the video for QuickBooks Desktop. Later, you'll see videos for FreshBooks and Xero and Zoho Books and Wave and just a handful of things. When you're watching this, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments box. If you'd like to see videos using other software, please let me know. All right, so it says we're all set up. That's great. I feel like that's not true at all because we haven't done anything yet, but hooray. Okay, so we can do things. We can get paid faster. That means we can take credit card payments, which we're not going to. Recording checks um, simpler so we can order checks from Intuit. We really don't write a lot of paper checks, so we don't need that. And then we can apply for funding for our, our business. 
man, right about now, I feel like everybody could use a little bit of funding, but we're not going to worry about that. We're not going to do a, any sort of applying for funding through into it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now there's a new feature to her. So this is QuickBooks telling us, hey, there's some new features about 2021 that are different from what you saw before. There are plenty of amazing videos about the new features. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this and pretend like we're all seeing QuickBooks desktop for the first time. And if we're seeing it for the first time, we're not going to know what's different about the advanced bank feeds compared to the old bank feeds. So I'm just going to close this. So I can click help and get all the new features back. That's great. So this is what, what is called the home. So the home is kind of this map. I'm just going to take a moment to channel my inner bookkeeper and tell you what you're seeing. In the top section, you have vendors, and this is where you enter things that are related to vendors or people that you give money to. The middle section is customers. That's people who give you money. The bottom section is employees. Those are your team members. To the right is company. So that means your company. Down below is banking, and that's your banking. So let's talk about what we have. We This is 2021. We have all of 2020 data to enter. And we, we need to just magically get it all into QuickBooks so we can turn this over to our accountant. Um, my accountant, I'm sure, will be thrilled if I send him a QuickBooks file for Fantasy Pet Shop. And he'll say, goodness, I don't know that we ever talked about this. But that's okay. My accountant rocks. All right. So let's do this. Um, we need to... We need to enter stuff, right? And the stuff we have to enter is the invoices for the, the clients we've generated invoices for. I got a bunch of invoices. I made them in Google Docs and I've just saved them and now I need to enter them. The other thing I need to enter is my banking, right? I, I have to tell QuickBooks about all the money that, you know, I've deposited into the checkbook and all the money I've spent, all my income, all my expenses, all of the banker, Rachel, all of it. So... So that sounds like fun. Um, let's pick a place. I vote that we start by entering in our invoices. If we get the invoices in, it'll kind of give us a, a chance to get to know what's happening within our QuickBooks. And then we can just, we can enter the banking and then we can take a look at where we're at. I have a file folder on my computer with, with all the things relating to my business. So let me just pull that over to this screen for you to see. So here's my business file folder. I've got my bank transactions. I've downloaded a CSV file. I have some invoices. I made bank statements. I have some logos from my website. So let, let's just start with the invoices. I only made three invoices for this video because I wanted to show you how it was to enter them. But I figured you once you saw three, you'd kind of get the idea. So here's my invoice. I'm going to zoom out so we can see what it was. So my business sold to Muffin McRitchie on January of last year. I sold Sphinx, Jackalope, and Shoelace Snakes. I charged a little bit for shipping and handling, and then there was a balance of $51.47. I know, or I think this was paid because I made, I changed the file name to include the word paid at the end. So what I'm trying to do is simulate what you might be experiencing as a small business owner. You've kept track of everything in Word. You've marked stuff as paid, however you've marked it as paid. And now you need to get it into QuickBooks so you can get yourself organized and send stuff over for taxes. So let's get this invoice entered into our QuickBooks. I'm just going to move it over to my other screen while I work. So I've got it over there. So let's go back to here. I can do this a couple of ways. In the middle of my screen, I can click on Create Invoices or I can go to the top of my screen and click on customers and create invoices. I'm going to do this at the top of my screen because I won't always have this middle uh, section here, this home page. In fact, I'm just going to click escape on the keyboard to take it away. If you're looking at QuickBooks desktop and it looks like this and you've lost your home page with that nice little map on the left, you can click home and it'll come right back. All right, so let's go to customers. And let's go to create invoices. So this is kind of hard to see. It says customer dash J. Uh, I'm just going to click this on the left hand side to collapse the, the pane or the menu. And I'm going to make this one bigger. 
All right, so let's type in our client, Muffin McRitchie. So I've got my client in there and I'm gonna click down here. This pop-up appears and it says, Muffin McRitchie is not found on the customer job list. To automatically add Muffin, click Quick Add. You can enter more detailed information later. So I'm just gonna click Quick Add. If I click Setup, it gives me a place to enter in her address and her phone number and all that good stuff, but I don't need any of that. I just wanna enter this and move on. So this was on 125.20, it's invoice number 102. And again, I'm just grabbing this off of the invoice that I previously created in Word, or in my case, Google Docs. So the item, the item says, what did I sell to her? Well, I don't have anything that I've sold. It's a brand new QuickBooks file. We just made it together. So I'm going to click on add new. I have all these options. Um, I'm going to call it a non-inventory part. It's for goods that I buy that I don't keep track of. So it, it's different from inventory. I don't have an inventory or warehouse of my fantasy pets. They're just imaginary pets that I'm selling for the purpose of this video. So the item name or number. I don't have a a number for this. I'm just going to give it the name. Um, so this one is a Sphinx. So I'm going to say Sphinx. And then sub item of, we're not going to use sub items and we're not going to use manufacturer part numbers. We're just going to keep it real simple. This is the default description. Whatever I type here will appear in the middle section of my invoice. Over to the right is the price. This says, how much am I selling it for? So in this case, I sell it for $1.75 each. The account, this just says when I make a sale, which account should it, it link to? Um, when I look at my report that says, here's the money you've earned and here's the money you've spent on stuff, what category should I use for my earned money? So I'm, I'm just gonna say merchandise sales is my account. So I'll say, okay. So how many of these did I sell? According to my invoice, I sold 10. So it is for the next one, Jackalope. I'm gonna go a little bit faster this time because I think you have a good sense of what's happening. In this case, QuickBooks doesn't know the word Jackalope. And I'm just looking to make sure I spelled it correctly and I'm pretty sure I did. This will happen to you. You'll have a word that QuickBooks doesn't know for any variety of reasons. You can say to replace, that's not correct. You can say to ignore, that's fine, except for the next time you use that word on an invoice, you're gonna get the same error message. Or you can say add, to add it to the dictionary so that QuickBooks will automatically say, oh, I know that word, and it will not bring up this message. I'm gonna to choose to add. So how many did we sell? We sold five, $200 each. It's nice because I've already entered the description that goes here, and then I can always edit it if I wanted to give it a slightly different description. So shoelace snake so now everything i have matches my invoice except let me pull the invoice back over so you can see it again at the bottom of my invoice i can see their shipping and handling of 147 dollars so let me go ahead and go back and add that 147 dollars in shipping and handling shipping and handling the amount for shipping and handling is gonna vary, so I'm not gonna put a rate in. The income account that I would like to use for this is gonna be different for merchandise sales. Um, there's not actually an income account here for shipping and handling, so let's make one. I'm gonna scroll up to the top and click on Add New. So account type is income. The account name will be Shipping and Handling, Save and Close. So now it's gonna to go to shipping and handling income. I'm gonna click okay. Quantity of one, based on my invoice, it's $147. And I'm gonna say save and close. This warning says that this transaction is more than 90 days ago. I'm gonna say, yeah, it is. It says to turn off this warning, change the number of days, go to edit, preferences, accounting. Just a reminder, we're going back and doing a bunch of stuff for the year 2020, so we're catching up one year of data. I really don't want this error message to show up every single time I add something, so I am gonna disable this. I'm gonna go to the top of my screen and click on edit. 
I'm going to come down to preferences. On the left hand side, I'm going to click on accounting at the top of my list. On the right hand side, I'm going to click on the tab that says company preferences. I'm then going to delete or uncheck this warning. So stop warning me about stuff more than 90 days in the past. And don't worry about warning me about stuff that is more than 30 days in the future. I'm going to click on OK. So what I know, based on the fact that I saved this invoice with the word paid on the end of it, is that this client is paid for their pet. And so I want to record it as being paid. Right now, if I look in QuickBooks, I'll see that it's unpaid and that she owes money, and that's not true. Based on this graph, I can see that we start with create invoice, and then the arrow takes me to receive payments. I can either click receive payments here, or I can go to the top of my screen and go to customers, and then I can come down to receive payments. I'm going to receive payment now. So who paid me? Well, Muffin paid me. How much did she pay? We're going to say she paid the full amount due of $51.47. We're going to say she paid it, uh, we'll say $127. Took her a couple days. Um, she paid in cash uh, in that, that invoice. So everything looks good here. QuickBooks automatically checked the invoice. It said, yep, this is the one being paid. Uh, the original amount of the invoice was $51.47. The amount due is $51.47, and the amount of the payment is $51.47. So everything looks good. I'm just going to choose Save and Close. So in my folder, you can see that I have three invoices. I'm just going to rapidly enter these next two invoices, and then we'll talk about what's next. As I'm entering these invoices, since I know that they're paid, one thing I can do is click Save in the upper left-hand corner, and then come over to the right and click on Receive Payments. This is going to be slightly faster than going to the top of my list and saying Customer Receive Payment. So everything is, is filled in. It's all good. We're just going to pretend this one's a check. So Muffin, 1073. Uh, we'll pretend she paid it two days later. It doesn't matter that she paid it two days later. I just wanted to make it a little more interesting. And so everything is good. Check number one, two, three, four, and then save and close. All right, I'm going to say save and close on this. So now I've entered all of my sales of my various pets. If I was doing this for a real business, I'd likely have more than three invoices for the previous year. For this video, I want to show you how to do this as if you had invoices to enter, and then also show you as if you didn't have invoices to enter, but you still wanted to record the income to your business. So let's take a look at our reports and just see how things are starting to shape up. I'm going to click on reports at the top of my screen. I'm going to come down to company and financial, and then over to profit and loss standard. The profit and loss report is the report that talks about the income and the expenses for our business. So our business, it's last year's data. I can either click this drop down on the left and say, show me last year, uh, last fiscal year, or I can change the dates right here. So here's last fiscal year. I have $14,000 worth of pet sales or merchandise sales, and I have $200 worth of shipping and handling. It looks like I made a profit of $14,000. We know that's not true because we haven't entered any of our expenses yet. But right now it looks great. Let me show you another report just so you can kind of see things coming together. We'll click on reports. We'll come down to customers and receivables. And then we'll come down here to transaction list by customer. I'm just going to change this to all because it's only last year. This is kind of confusing, but it might be interesting to you. If you wanted to see what's happening with each of your customers, you can see that Brian had an invoice and then a payment. Muffin had an invoice, a payment, an invoice, a payment. Let me show you one more report while I've got you.